Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video, thank you all the members of the Patreons, make sure to subscribe and let's get into it guys. So continue the series of videos that we did uh, I think two days ago uh, where we talked about what is the best option for the US Navy to actually receive as an aircraft on their line, the F-14D or the F-18. Uh, today I wanted to do that with the Soviet line. So, uh, of course we have the Yak-141 as the top of the line over here. Uh, there is a gap below it, or above it, or <laughs> prior to the Yak-141 that I'm going to do a video about an aircraft that I would think that would make sense there. But afterwards, we have, I think, two options. And I wanted to talk about which of these would be the best options. And what are tho those options? Well, the first one, of course, would be the Su-33, guys. Uh, or commonly known initially in the Soviet service. Uh, technically, it got into like a pre-service status or something like that just before the Soviet Union collapsed. So, um, yeah, it could be named as well as an Su-27K, right? But uh, just very, very initially, uh, shortly afterwards, it was named uh, Su-33, right? Uh, and this, what is this aircraft? Well, it is basically, basically a carrier version of the Su-27. But it has some very interesting changes to it. Well, the first one and the most notable one is, of course, the canards, the Rusterhook, and of course the uh, foldable wings. All things that are done uh, to actually help the aircraft land on carriers. But there are also some other changes, like for example, the addition of uh, a better flap design, for example, and with the canards and everything like that, it could actually bring 10 to 12% more wing area onto the aircraft uh, bringing some some other like modified uh, stabilators and other things to actually make the aircraft be able to um, you know maneuver well in very low air speeds right uh, of course the folded wings would help uh, actually you know stock this aircraft on the carrier uh, but that wouldn't change too much on the um, on the performance of it uh, and of course he had a little bit a tiny little bit more power on the engines uh, used to just make the aircraft take off okay um, so it would be basically an su-27 that is a little bit heavier but it would have better uh, maneuverability in the low um, air speeds that's what it is basically right uh, the weapon systems would be the same, apart from a minor thing that they actually added, which is two extra pylons, um, you know, depending on what, like, date of the aircraft they actually wanted to add. Uh, technically, it could take 12 missiles instead of the 10 of the original Su-27, so it could take two more R-27s, two more R-73s, for example. And also, there is another cool thing about this aircraft is that the uh, IRST was kind of sided a little bit, placed in a in a pl a little bit to the side compared to the Su-27, uh, making it have a little bit more of a downwards kind of view on the IRST, together with uh, a radar that was a little bit more optimized for uh, search above the sea, right? Uh, but it would be basically the same in the game. Uh, so no Fox trees, and normally just you know, non-guided stuff for air to ground. Normal weapons would be R27ERs, r 27 uh R73s. That would be it, okay? And of course, you can take the ECM pods as well uh, on the wing tips. As for the MiG-29K, which was basically a counterpart to it and also an addition to the Soviet Navy because the objective was to actually use both of the types of aircraft in the same carrier, it is basically a naval version of the MiG-29M, which by itself it's a whole different beast from the MiG-29s that we have. It has more fuel, uh, around 40% more fuel if I'm not mistaken. Um, it would have a lot more modern avionics, you know, so uh, glass cockpit styled uh, stuff, you know. And of course the radar, the Zook radar that you see in the Yak-141, right? Uh, that would be the main changes to the original MiGs and the M variant. Of course there are a lot of minor ones, like for example, two extra missiles, so it could take eight missiles instead of six. 
and of course the addition of the R-77 to our, its arsenal, the addition of the um, air-to-ground guided ammunition as well. So it's a whole different beast. It's a lot more effective and a lot better as an aircraft than the original MiG-29s, right? And the K variant would be basically what the Su-33 would be to, to the Su-27, right? So a raster hook, uh, folded bow wings, um, stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and these are the two options that we have. But what what is the best option for now you must you you might ask right well that depends that's the thing um if the game continues to be what it is right now that we know that we will not be the su-33 will be the clear option you know uh it brings another problem to the table uh bringing another su-27 which is all like one of the best aircraft in the game to a country that doesn't really need one um, but the thing is that the Su-33 doesn't have Fox 3 missiles that we will see in the next patch, right? So the MiG-29 would be more advanced on that regard. Uh, so it's kind of a question of the weapon systems, I think. Because in the capability, the Su-33 will, of course, have a lot more time in the battle and a lot more missiles. But the MiG-29 will be a lot lighter and better in other situations like point defense or anything like that, right? So it, de it depends very much on the opinion of Gaijin and the community, I think, right? In my opinion, to be honest, um, I think the Su-33 would make a lot more sense to be added first because, as you know, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Su-33 was chosen to be the main fighter for the Kuznetsov um, instead of having both of the aircraft flying together. In these days, they are like in niche, uh, like putting the MiG 29Ks in service and stuff, but that's the thing. Like today, in a revised version of the 29 that they had in prototype versions in the late 80s, right? So at the end of the day, it's a completely different beast as well. Um, but I don't know. I think both should be added. Um, but to be honest, the Su 33 would make a lot more sense and. Um, not having the Fox 3 missiles would actually help not be that OP when it's actually added, being added at a 12.7 uh, BR, right? Uh, and the MiG-29, maybe the K variant being the older one, the 80s one, could be actually added as, a, as an event vehicle or something like that with later models of the K, like today's model that it's being used by many navies, um, actually being used as the top dog of the navy of the soviet tech tree right uh, or something like that uh, of course this is only my opinion and there's multiple considerations to do it here but i think that would be the least power creep way of actually dealing with that although i love the mig 29k and it's one of my favorite aircraft of all time if not my favorite aircraft of all time so i'm kind of biased and towards that even but the Su-33, it's probably just a better option overall, just because it doesn't have that factor of just being too power creeper, you know. Um, of course, I'm talking about when everybody receives Fox 3s, and this aircraft doesn't have it, but it does have 12 missiles, right? So it would be kind of a drawback not having the Fox 3s, but then you have 12 missiles and you are very good at dogfights. It could be an interesting dynamic between the fighters that we have right now and the fighters that we will see in the future with the Fox 3 missiles, right? But yeah, guys, uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about uh, the two options? What would be the best option for the Soviet Navy? Uh, let me know in the comments. I see you guys on the next one. Make sure to subscribe and bye, guys.